Good morning. Welcome everyone as we return to Daily Mass and our daily celebration of the Eucharist um, at 7.30 a.m. for the rest of this week. Also welcome everyone joining us online. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. John Chrysostom, the Golden Mouth. Please join me in the entrance antiphon. Those who are wise will shine brightly like the splendor of the firmament and those who lead the many to justice shall be like the stars forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us take a moment to call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, who will that the Bishop St. John Chrysostom should be illustrious by his wonderful eloquence and his experience of suffering, Grant us, we pray, that instructed by his teachings, may be strengthened through the example of his invincible patience, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplication, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings and for all in authority, that we may lead a quiet and tranquil life in all devotion and dignity. This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wills everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there's also one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all. This was the testimony at the proper time. For this I was appointed preacher and apostle. I am speaking the truth, I am not lying. Teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. It is my wish then that in every place the men should pray lifting up holy hands without anger or argument. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. Hear the sound of my pleading when I cry to you, lifting up my hands toward your holy shrine. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I find help. Then my heart exalts, and with my song I give him thanks. The Lord is the strength of his people, the saving refuge of his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Feed them and carry them forever. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had finished all his words to the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave who was ill and about to die. 
and he was valuable to him. When he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and save the life of his slave. They approached Jesus and strongly urged him to come, saying, He deserves to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation and he built the synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was only a short distance from the house, the centurion sent friends to tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and let my servant be healed. For I too am a person subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning, said to the crowd following him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When the messengers returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. The Gospel of the Lord. I love our first reading this morning. In the second chapter of Timothy, we hear these words, Beloved, first of all, I ask that supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be offered for everyone. What beautiful words St. Paul shares with us this morning that we should offer supplications, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings for everyone. Certainly, these are words that each one of us can relate to in the aftermath of Hurricane Ida. For many of us, without this time of electricity, in this time in our homes where, or if we had traveled away to evacuate, we spent much time in prayer and supplication. We spent much time pleading before the Lord to answer our prayers. And then we hear this theme reinforced in the responsorial psalm, as we hear in Psalm 28, the refrain, Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard my prayer. We hear in the psalm, Hear the sound of my pleading when I cry to you, lifting up my hands toward your holy shrine. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts, and I find my help. Isn't that not the purpose of prayer, to petition the Lord for him to be our trust, to trust in him, that he could be our strength, that he could be our shield. We're so blessed to have a good and loving God who answers our prayers and knows what we need. Today in our gospel, we hear another beautiful story of prayer, in a way a beautiful story of intercession. We hear of this Roman centurion who has actually developed a good relationship with the Jews in the area that he has service to. So much so that he helped them to build a synagogue, that this pagan Roman has actually helped the Jews to build a house of prayer. This Roman centurion obviously has a sense of devotion. And he hears about Jesus, this miracle worker, this Jewish prophet. And this Roman centurion has a slave that is dear to him and who is very ill and dying. So the Roman centurion sends some of his friends or servants to Jesus to petition him to heal his slave. And Jesus does. Once again, this is a form of intercessory prayer. It's as if this Roman centurion was turning to the saints or to our Blessed Mother saying, Petition the Lord. Go to your Heavenly Father. Plead on my behalf for the gift of this healing, of this miracle. And the Lord, because of the centurion's faith, 
deigned to grant the miracle and brought healing to the slave. My dear St. Genevieve family, I don't know what your experience has been in these past two weeks during Hurricane Ida, her aftermath, and our recovery. But I know for me, one of the graces was that quality time I spent with my family, especially during the hurricane and the time of rebuilding and recovery. And in a sense, I received different emails and text messages and social media posts and phone calls from different people that I've met throughout my journey of life that knew I lived down here in South Louisiana, that saw Terrebonne Parish or Lafouche Parish on the national news, and they reached out to me to check in to see how I was doing. And in a sense, I kind of identify with the Roman centurion today and, and how he loved his slave and, in a sense, that relationship, that Roman centurion saw the value in that relationship, the value in that person, and he prayed for them. In a sense, over these past two weeks, just being with my family, seeing the value of being with my family, the, the value of those relationships with my relatives, my parents, with my sister, and then this the value of, of the people I've met in the journey of life just the value of brother priest and laity I've met over the years that, that have reached out to me in these last two weeks to, to rekindle those relationships, to reconnect with them. I'm sure you've reconnected with many in these past two weeks as they've checked in on you. And a sense has filled my heart with a sense of gratitude and a sense of joy and also a sense of supplication, a sense of prayer. Not only have I been praying for, for our recovery efforts here at home, I've been praying for my family. I've been praying for those acquaintances that have been renewed. There have been many opportunities for reconnecting in the Lord in relationship with others. And it has brought a sense of renewal of intercessory prayer into my own heart and my own life. As the joy of those relationships and that gratitude leads me to pray for those people that have reached out to offer support and to continue to pray for my family and friends and our St. Genevieve community here at home as we recover from Hurricane Ida. That certainly has been one of the special graces, one of those silver linings in these past two weeks. I hope that you've been able to reconnect with others, to reflect on what things are most important to you in your life in these past two weeks, what things are most valuable to you. This Roman centurion recognized that his slave was very valuable to him. Even though he was his slave and he could have dispensed with them as his own property, this Roman centurion, centurion realized that when his slave became ill, that his slave was more than just a slave, but a friend and a good servant, and he loved him. So he prayed for him and he was healed. My dear brothers and sisters, let us continue to pray for those people who are valued in our hearts who are meaningful in our relationships, and whatever their needs are, let us do as St. Paul said today in the first chapter of St. Timothy. Let us offer prayers and supplications and thanksgivings for them, that the Lord too may bring healing into their lives and answer their prayers as he did for the Roman centurion today. Confident in the love of the Father, let us turn to him with our petitions. For Pope Francis and all our church leaders, may the heart of the Good Shepherd be their guide. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all Christians hindered by lack of religious freedom, may the strength of Jesus sustain and console them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all in this faith community, may the Holy Spirit guide us in the use of our gifts and talents for the kingdom. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our patroness, St. Genevieve of Paris, will deliver our community from the devastation caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and intercede for those still suffering in any way because of this virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we will be spared any more loss of life and property in this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In silence, let us offer our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us continue to pray for all of our first responders, for our linemen, our policemen, our firemen, our health care providers, our educators, our clergy, and all those who assist in our recovery efforts, that the Lord may continue to strengthen them in the service of love and charity of their neighbors, that we may continue to rebuild our community of Thibodeau and Lafourche Parish. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers, for we trust in your kindness and compassion through Christ our Lord. I pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice. May the sacrifice which we godly present in commemoration of St. John Chrysostom be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up, for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, May merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. With him, and in him, and through him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may we always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that they should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that these mysteries we have received as we commemorate St. John Chrysostom may confirm us in your love and enable us to be faithful in confessing your truth through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing, just a brief comment. Once again, we heard St. Paul say in his letter to Timothy to offer prayer and supplication and petition, but he also said to offer gratitude. And so let us always remember in our prayer to always offer gratitude, even in times like this. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Remember, the most gracious Virgin Mary, and never was it.